One of the most interesting storylines of the pre-draft has been Stefan Castle's supposed unwillingness to work out and really test for teams that have a starting point guard in place. He believes he's a point guard, his camp believes he's a point guard, at least according to the rumors, and they, you know, aren't budging on that. So I think the, the natural question is for Castle, a guy who very much was not a point guard at UConn on a great UConn team, is Castle a quote-unquote point guard? And in this video, we'll kind of try to define what that really means, and we'll look at what Castle could do at UConn, what he couldn't, and maybe looking back to some of the older AAU high school tape to find more answers on the quote-unquote point guard thing. But this is going to be a good one. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, all of that. I would really appreciate it. And Castle, we know he is a fantastic connective passer. Excellent, perfectly timed cut right when this defender digs, and an immediate lay down to cling in for an easy dunk. This is what Castle does so well, executing within the structure of UConn's multifaceted, fast-paced offense. Again, we see Castle on the roll here after pitching, gets the ball, immediately processes what's in front of him. When he's in these kind of off-ball plays, his processing speed is lightning quick and he can really hit these kind of tougher NBA level passes we're going to talk a lot more about the driving and the separation but help slides off of the big castle hits a late lay down to get him his best chance to finish him big goes up and ends up drawing a foul and in these like chaos situations where maybe the ball is loose and not everyone is set castle tends to be calm and under control he's able to make these reads in in these kind of scenarios and castle is an excellent cutter as well not just to pass but to score himself we'll talk about his finishing a lot throughout this as well but he's a pretty good finisher and can rise and use his balance and body control in midair to finish through contact castle's nice at flashing to the middle where he can use his really nice footwork to pivot here he is against one of the best defenders in the draft and carter flashing in the middle excellent footwork step through there to get carter to bite and finish with his off hands over actually was that an offhand finish i kind of couldn't tell um i think so i think that's an offhand finish yeah Really impressive play there. Castle is a nice driver with his strength. I would say that's probably going to be the path for Castle to really get great as a driver. And we're going to already start to see some of the issues and why my, my ultimate thesis of this video is going to end up being that Castle is not a point guard. Um, and my main issue is his inability to score and create advantages. Castle's not a shooter. Defenses don't respect him as a shooter. So they go under. And if Castle can get like really strong and really great at the bump point, maybe this can be a way that he wins, right? Bumping defenders, spinning, using his footwork, getting into the paint that way. That can be a potential avenue. As we see this play, watch how kind of little the defense pays attention to him on this first drive. And just go under. Castle is kind of backing out, backing out, backing out, backing out, backing out, switched on to the D is going to isolate in the shot clock and ends up using his strength to carve out space. This is a really nice finish at the end. Castle has a nice handle, and he gets really low on these drives. You see he's always like trying to get lower than his defender's shoulders to generate that bump, and Ladie is a strong motherfucker who is like 20 plus, not, who's like six years older than Castle. So moving him at all is impressive, and Castle feathers that one in. This was an awesome play in the tournament, spinning baseline. And Castle loves this, like, short short corner mid-range pick and roll where the floor is more condensed and he can kind of just play two-man game and read. I do wonder, right, about the translation of this kind of action. I would recommend you go watch my Dylan Jones video if you haven't because um, Jones runs a lot of the same play types, but differences with Jones, right? He's a much better shooter overall, um, a much better just advantage creator in general as we're going to get to, 
Like, Castle can definitely post up smaller guards and use his size and strength to beat mismatches. And as, you know, a 6'6 guy with a real wingspan, that's probably going to be a thing in the NBA too if he can really play the quote-unquote point guard position and get smaller guys matched up on him. Here's Castle again winning with his strength and kind of pushing through defenders, which is really, really good to see. But his inability to draw over coverage really worries me at this point and we're going to talk more about his history of shooting as well defenses like i said don't really respect castle so he can't create as a playmaker if he's not threatening as a scorer if no one gets open and there's no one to pass to it doesn't matter how great your vision is right if everyone's playing 1v1 there's no help coming it doesn't matter if you can see every pass if there's no pass available to make then there's no pass available to make. We again see some good and bad. Castle does have a really nice handle. And like I said, he gets low again. Try to push through with strength and gets a little push. But this is a tough shot. And when he's creating for himself in the half court, Castle really does live on these tough shots. And this just isn't going to fly if he's going to be an, a point guard initiator in the league. It's so important for these on-ball players to be able to create advantages on their own without help. Even, you know, with a screen, that's such an important part of drawing help in and creating opportunities to make plays to draw help to make these high-level reads. But Castle is just, just isn't really happening in this area. His burst isn't great as he struggles to get by defenders and he gets blocked a lot as well. I am a little worried about his vertical explosion at the rim, though. He has some really nice finishes with his balance and his footwork and his touch. He just struggles to get high and get himself open at the rim. Even on plays like this where you, see, you can see himself kind of speeding up. And Castle doesn't really have any sort of pacing or intermediate game, which is a huge component of playing point guard, right? Where maybe if he sees Baylor going under, Castle can like be patient here, hot, but he just kind of sprints at the lane and throws up a shot. That almost goes in, to be fair. To be fair to Castle. Um, here's against um, another defender here. Fading away to the corner. Not a great shot early in the shot clock and gets blocked. That ability to generate separation just isn't there. Which is the key thing to playing point guard for me. Unless you're a great shooter and Castle is not a great shooter. And plays like this intrigue me where Castle can kind of gain a little bit of separation because of his handle and because of how low he can get. I love this double cross totally setting up this defender who like opens up his hips, bites. Castle gets low, but he just can't really end up generating push and he probably should have made this pass to clean, honestly down low another place where castle changing paces and slowing down would end up benefiting him right so we can read out the defense and make a more controlled decision there this is kind of my sticking point issue with castle and i think him developing a mid-range pull-up game would really help so when even like when he's playing this like on this kind of side pick and roll if they go under castle can punish them and i think these are going to be like the baby steps towards developing a legit threatening jumper, which Castle doesn't have, right? He was a very low volume shooter. Maybe got a little better in the tournament, but still defenses were playing off of him, letting him shoot. And that's never really a great sign. Castle did flash some interesting stuff when defenses did go over though. In a play like this, for example, where he's running like a kind of a, double screen here and the defender goes over we see castle play slower he gets his man in jail and another offhand floater i think that's the second offhand floater in this video which is really nice to see i think this was probably his most impressive play of the season if i'm remembering correctly nope not this play it'll come eventually but i love him double crossing to get a slight advantage the little hesitation and look how low castle is his torso almost at parallel with the ground that plus his upper body strength helps him get into there, draw a foul, and one. Really impressive. And there are some flashes of him being able to use his speed to beat this sagging coverage. It's not great, but when there's, you know, Cam Spencer's drag screen ends up throwing off this defense, Castle can get into the lane, and again, we see him finishing with his touch, and I think this is the play. 
Yes, this is the play. This this is like the where where was this all the where was this the whole time? <laughs> where Castle ends up rejecting this cling and pick and roll. Great handle. Crosses back middle and dunks in the half court. Not the greatest defense at the basket, but this is the stuff where it's like, yeah, this this is point guard shit. Where you can actually maneuver through the defense, make stuff happen in the basket. And once you're doing this, right, defenses will be forced to commit to you as a scorer, which opens up passing lanes. But at the moment, this is just very inconsistent. And when I'm watching Castle's creation clips, I I can't help but shake the memory of Jarrett Culver, who is one of the most informative players for me. I had him like number two or something in 2019. That was my first year really scouting. And I learned a lot from him. And Culver won in a lot of the same ways, won and lost in a lot of the same ways Castle did. Where Culver was, you know, 6 6 ish wing, not the greatest burst or advantage creator, who was crafty and won with his handle and his, you know, balance and stuff. But the bottom line was Culver just struggled to generate separation consistently on the offensive end. Where he was able to win was like with these tough finishes and his touch, right? This is a ridiculous shot finishing with his left hand, but Culver can't generate any space. There's no help to draw in. I don't think I show any clips in this video, but Culver was an awesome passer, um, just like Castle, maybe even a little better. And Culver's best thing was this spin move where he would get into the body, you know, leverage, getting low, just like Castle would, spin off and finish. I will never forget this big play in the, in, in the national title game where Culver was able to spin back. But in the NBA, that shit just didn't really translate as Culver couldn't win downhill anymore. So he had to rely on a lot of difficult mid-range jumpers that he wasn't really ever that great at. He was a solid pull-up shooter, but that never ended up really materializing. I think you could have said the same, right? Where if Culver can continue progressing his handle and get stronger, right? He played with great leverage, just like Castle, but that hampered his passing and his decision-making as well. A lot of this just, the, the ability to create separation, right? You have Culver playing on the perimeter as a quote-unquote point guard, and he can't make a read because there's no read to really make. Everyone is covered because Culver can't separate. And this is, I have some worries that, at a low end, Castle is going to, you know, have those issues. And I'm not saying Castle is going to be Culver. And Culver, I think, I'm not saying just because he reminds me of Culver, he's going to be bad. I think Culver was a good prospect. And there is a universe where, where, where Culver ended up being good. But I don't know. I'm a little worried about these wings who struggle to create separation. And I think now we get to the most interesting part is, is there anything in Castle's high school tape that suggests otherwise, that maybe he was miscast or used in the wrong setting? And I think it's informative to figure out what a great tall point guard looked like in high school, how, how we could have seen this. And we can take a prospect like Cade Cunningham, for example, who was a dominant downhill advantage creator and one with its crazy burst, explosion, and handle. He was elite as a scoring threat in AAU, getting downhill whenever he wanted, scoring with touch at the basket, winning with burst and creating dunks for himself in the half court. This was all key to opening up the passing game, as well as his pull-ups. Cade was not the shooter he is today, but he was... More advanced than Castle at this stage, I'll say, as a pull-up shot maker. And because of all of this scoring stuff, Cade drew defensive attention on plays like this, where he was so routinely diming up his teammates in every which way. That's his <laughs> fucking crazy lob. This Texas Titans team was awesome. But we see they respect Cade as a shooter, hence this switch out. Number two is, is that fucking Deuce McBride? I swear to God, that's Deuce McBride. That's hilarious. I didn't even realize. I don't even remember this this clip. I these clips were like buried in my fucking hard drive. Yeah, that, that totally is Deuce McBride. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> but Deuce Deuce zoned in on Cade because he's a threat to score the basketball. I don't think this. I just think this pass was pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to include it. And then a guy like Shea who was a lot smaller at the time, but still generated advantages constantly at his own unique pace. Timing, varying speeds, off-foot finishes, getting downhill with his burst and his handling. And Shea was 
even though not even close to what he ended up being, was still able to consistently get to his spots and generate advantages and dictate rather than be dictated by the defense. He's deciding what's going on, the shots that he's taking, the, the shots that the defense is going to be giving up. And Shea didn't really shoot very often, mostly because he didn't have to. And I think there's something to be said for the fact that a lot of these young, shaky shooters are bad shooters, not because they're bad at shooting, it's just because they've never had to shoot before. They could always win with their drives and athleticism in other ways, and it's like, why wouldn't, if, if, if you're 16, 17-year-old Shea, why the hell would you ever shoot the ball when you can get to the rim every single play? And I think that's definitely, you know, possibly optimistic case for Castle, but let's go back and look at Castle's AAU tape, which is, I think, the best sample just because of the competition level compared to high school, which can be a lot more variable, right? And I was, you know, intrigued because I watched a little of high Castle in high school, but not a ton. But honestly, it was a lot of the same that we saw at UConn. Defense backing off of him because they're not scared of him as a shooter. He hops into a difficult shot and ends up not being able to finish. This time, Castle tries to spin back into a shot. Another just, like, not amazing decision, but, you know, Castle was the high, the primary scorer on, on this team. He was the point guard, right? Is this an NBA point guard? Well, Castle spins baseline. He can't really create separation, right? The, the lack of vertical explosion is something we talked about. And Castle kind of struggled to create with the burst and the explosion at this level, too. Again, we see a pretty light coverage where this defender really isn't trying to go over at all and queen is Derek queen is sitting back and is able to very easily like that's a player with nba size and length and queen who was able to very easily stuff that that drive by castle and a lot of the same stuff right really great tough finish there but it's a tough finish and Castle gets a free runway to explode to the rim because no one's really interested in guarding him over the screen. We can kind of say it's hard to, you know, this defender isn't really fighting over. There's a stab attempt there, but Castle does it all himself, gets downhill and finish. I think this was my favorite play that I watched from the little AAU games I saw from Castle where he's actually using change of pace and handle to get to the rim. And part of it, right, is because they're playing him like a threat. This defender is hard fighting over, but that's where Castle can show off his handle, his change of pace. I love that he kind of like gets low and swims into the paint here, shielding the defender and finishing. That's a pretty high level move. I, did, I do have some worries. I, I've talked about this, maybe on maybe not on this channel, but a lot on like my Twitter and stuff, about how I worry about players who win with physicality at young ages overwhelmingly. And Castle, I think, was kind of an example of that, where he was like taller and bigger than guys, and they couldn't really stop him. And that becomes a lot harder to maintain at the next level. We kind of saw it in college, right? Where Castle could do that a little bit, but not a ton to be really efficient. And I don't think it's a case where, like, he has like outlier strength, like like Isaiah Collier, who even in college is able to dominate physically. But this was a really nice play, snaking back to the right, getting low again and finishing. Castle's finishing can be really creative and diverse. Where this is great, gets to the middle, gets back to the right. This is this is point guard stuff. I I would like to see more of this going forward. The maneuvering a screen, and Castle's passing was again not not as much point guard and more like connective off-ball stuff. He's not exactly dictating what happens. He's reacting to what the defense gives him. He sees that the backside help comes to the big, so he simply lobs it up over top. It's a really nice read, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's a quote-unquote point guard quality read. This was a pretty nice play, though, too, where Castle is patient, he waits on this double team, and ends up hitting the lifting shooter to the mid-range Solid stuff, but to me, nothing particularly special. And it was a lot of, even in high school, Castle exploiting the defense. And this is a ridiculous pass. What I'm saying is these complementary kind of playmaking stuff, not driving the pick and roll or stuff, but reading out the defense, staring down the wing and whipping it there, not even tipping off this pass until it's way too late. That's a disgusting read by Castle. And again, we see his trademarked kind of 
short corner post ISO where he showcased the ball handling ability, quickly snatching back to the baseline, hanging in the air, dropping it off to his big, who unfortunately smokes that play. And the question is, was Castle a shooter in high school? And the answer was, again, not really. We saw the the AAU clips, right, of the the defenses not treating him as a shooter. This one game against Duncanville, um, he hit, like, eight threes or something, or seven threes, and pretty much all of his flashes came from this game. (laughs) Um, But this this is the kind of stuff that you want to see from Castle, is him shooting the uh, shooting the deep pull up when defenders went under this was crazy <laughs> this is like where where is this man and I also think this shows just like how good be- these NBA players are especially at this lower level of competition but Castle was a low volume shooter in high school and AAU it wasn't like he was this dynamic shooter who just didn't shoot he's always been a questionable shooter and especially from the mid-range as someone who isn't a super comfortable mid-range pull-up shot maker and all of this kind of leads me to say that I think Castle and his camp are potentially making a mistake if they're trying to pigeonhole him, him into playing point guard. This is how we've seen some of these kind of college wings fail when they try to translate down, like Culver types, when they don't have the advantage creation juice or the shooting or the gravity to actually affect and force help and force rotations. I really just want Castle to embrace his role as like a chaos wing off ball driver cutter secondary pick and roll because I think he can be really great in that role I like Castle and I think taking him in the top 10 would be a totally fine thing to do as long as the team taking him is realistic about their expectations that maybe Castle isn't going to be our star initiator but he can be a legit two-way wing this is obviously a a video about Castle's offense but he's an awesome defender as well and I think he's going to be really great on that end especially on the ball and that combined with his secondary handling stuff his playmaking his cutting his just general IQ and feel for the game is all really valuable but to me, it's not top three pick valuable, even in an underwhelming draft. And I think one of the main ways that Castle could end up not working out is if, you know, whoever drafts him isn't necessarily honest about his strengths and weaknesses. And for, for his sake and everyone's involved, I, I hope that's the case. And, you know, I'd love to be wrong. Maybe Castle ends up being a crazy advantage creator. Or I, like, like I said, ends up getting super strong and is an awesome strength creator or allows the handle to really help him win out and and build out from there. But I'm just not super confident in that happening, and I would not like a team taking Castle in the top three to five, really, for that reason. But otherwise, you know, I I really like Castle otherwise, and I hope that he ends up in a good spot and, you know, one that's willing to be, hopefully help him willing to be more flexible about his role. But those are my thoughts on, on Castle's offense, and I, I always love going back to like old AAU film. That shit is so fun to me. Um, a like, comment, l- let, me know, let me know what you think. I'm just kind of rambling. Subscribe. All that would mean the world. Um, thank you all so much. I love you all.